Last night I was scrolling Reddit and this came across my feed. Undocumented backdoor found in Bluetooth chip used by a billion devices. The chip in question here is the ubiquitous ESP32 microchip made by Chinese manufacturer Expressive. If you don't know what the ESP32 is, let me see if I can get it into focus here. It is a series of boards that make doing Wi-Fi in Bluetooth applications in IoT devices, Internet of Things devices, extremely simple. And if this were true, this would be a catastrophic discovery. Whenever there's a vulnerability or God forbid a backdoor in a wireless application, it makes the world world of computing unsecure for everybody. Now what an ESP32 does is it creates like this thing costs $8 for $8. You can turn any application into a wireless application. I actually have a whole video. I don't know if you've seen this in my videos. There's a coffee maker back there. One of my first project videos on YouTube was I turned that coffee maker into an IoT coffee maker that I could turn on from my phone in like 50 lines of Arduino C, right? It was very fun and very simple. Now because of this, because of how fun and easy and cheap these chips are, they show up everywhere. I actually have a lamp upstairs that my wife made us buy. The lamp requires, to, it's required to be on the internet, okay? That's that's the, the world we live in currently. Um, and you can actually see via the MAC address of that device and actually the name of the SSID that it starts with, it is an ESP32 device. So just in my house alone right now, and I don't even use these that often, I have two esp 32 Any device that processes wireless information has to take in that data before it's authenticated, right? It has to read the SSID beacon frame. It has to read the Bluetooth low energy advertisement. All of that has to happen unauthenticated. And as a result, a vulnerability or God forbid, a backdoor that someone puts into that code that processes Processes this data would allow anybody to execute code as long as they could transmit wirelessly in the range of that device. That would be an absolute disaster. That means a person that has knowledge of the back door could, in a unmarked white van, drive by your house, emit the right flavor of the radiation into your house, and then boom, they have code execution on your device. Not a great place to be. So that was all going through my head when I ran when I read this title. The first paragraph says ubiquitous. E ESP32 microchip made by Chinese manufacturer Espressif and used by over 1 billion units as of 2023, which is correct, contains an undocumented quote unquote backdoor that can be leveraged for attacks. The undocumented commands allow for spoofing of trusted devices, unauthorized data access, and pivoting to other devices in the network, potentially establishing long-term persistence. And that's what I was afraid of. If you have this device, they get code execution onto here, they pivot to the device behind it, and boom, they're in your network forever. And so I I wanted to do some more research, like what is the vulnerability? How is the backdoor triggered? How did this happen? So I went to Hacker News, and as you can quickly see in the comments, I think the title is a bit misleading. If I'm reading correctly, the backdoor allows a computer peek and poke memory and other low level functions of its own USB adapter. I don't think this is usable over the air. I'm confused. Is it that the Bluetooth stack has a few undocumented commands? If these are the only accessible to the code running on the device, I'm not sure I'd call this a backdoor. So a lot of skepticism in the comments here. So the only thing left to do, the only remaining step is to just go read the slides. Now you'll see here, the company is a security research firm based out of Spain. Now, lucky for you guys, I do speak Spanish, ignore that. What's happening here is they're going through and they're extracting and reverse engineering all of the code inside the ESP32. The ESP32 itself actually runs an entire operating system called Free RTOS, Free Real-Time Operating System, that is used to process the data on the Wi-Fi, on the Bluetooth, and then use that to do whatever application you set it to do, which in most cases is very simple IoT-like stuff, right? And so what they're doing here is they're showing you that there are commands commands registered for the Bluetooth handler for the HCI, the host to controller interface for opcode 3F. Now opcode 3F per the Bluetooth spec is registered for proprietary commands. And they're freaked out that these commands are not documented. Okay, so commands that are proprietary, they're not documented. And so eventually they figure out 29 commands. I don't know if you can see all of these, I'll show them to you. But the main ones that they're mad about are read memory, write memory, read flash, write flash, and then sending a variety of packets. So from this position, you can send packets to different layers of the Bluetooth stack. You can also read and write registers within the ESP32. 
And so this gets a lot of attention at a security conference in Spain. And then TarLogic, the company that is presenting at this conference, uh, writes their own article saying that TarLogic detects a backdoor in the mass market ESP32 chip that could infect millions of IoT devices they go through. And uh, unfortunately, this article kind of turns into an ad about how good TarLogic is at doing uh, supply chain security and doing other kinds of research. And they don't really actually hone in too much on the ESP32 problem and kind of just say like, yep, also uh, we are the best at Bluetooth security and you guys should come work with us. One thing that's very important to note about this is that all of these commands can only be ran from the host to controller interface. To execute code on the host to controller interface, you already have to have code execution on the host. Meaning these commands can only be ran from a device that already has code being executed on it. So to call this a backdoor, I feel like is inauthentic in that when I hear backdoor, some kind of trust boundary is being violated. And now a quick word from our sponsors. It's me, I'm the sponsor. If you're a programmer or a cybersecurity specialist, I fundamentally believe that it is extremely important to know how computers work at a fundamental level. All of my courses on my site, Low Level Academy, are designed to teach you the basics of how computers work through a language like C or assembly by using either the C programming language to build a project, or maybe write some network code where you let the network talk to the program and digest that data. All these courses give you bite-sized lessons where you learn something new over the course of time to make you a better programmer. Oh, and by the way, it's on sale. This is the best way you can support me on this channel, go check out Low Level Academy and let's get back to the video. This comment on Hacker News kind of summarizes my feelings as concisely as possible. TLDR, they reverse engineered the firmware and found HCI commands to do things like read write memory, send packets and set the MAC address. Not really a backdoor. I don't know if they called it a backdoor, the presentation is in Spanish, or if the journalists are calling it a backdoor to get more clicks. Eventually we found out that the company itself, even in a English written article, do call it a backdoor. You need to have arbitrary access to the device in question already to send HCI commands to the device to use these commands. That means you're already controlling the device and how it operates. This isn't something that gets remotely exploited over the wireless link. Any exploits would already have to have full control over the device, at which point being able to change the MAC address or send packets isn't really a surprise anyway. Interesting research, but really groan inducing to see it spun as a backdoor. I don't know who's to blame for the wording though. I'm guessing the journalists. I feel this way completely. And to add on to, to this, my main issue with this is I know for a fact that I have friends and I have family and I have people in the industry that are running around in circles right now because their CTO, their middle managers are asking them, we have to fix the back door. Where are all the ESP 32s? We gotta get them out of the network. Show me your bill of materials. And it's like, guys, guys, it was sensationalized and it's not real, but now we have to do all the proper documentation and explain to people that it's like not actually a big deal and we need to just calm down. And, and let me be very clear, guys. I, I need to be so clear on this. I don't want this to come off as me shitting on somebody's research. This kind of research in weird hardware, like firmware level things is actually my, fi my favorite kind of research. I find it so interesting. But we can't, we can't be calling it a backdoor if it doesn't allow some kind of access that was not already granted. And it can't be used as like this weird sales tactic because now people are gonna freak out all over the world for what I, I honestly believe is a nothing burger. Like we found all of these functions and that's really neat and swell and stuff. And like maybe these could be used maliciously by like a future malicious ESP32 update or something. I don't know. It just feels kind of nefarious in and of itself and and I don't like it. Anyway, I, I'm, I'm sorry this video is so negative. I just, I wanna guess kind of make people feel better. Like A, calm down, there actually isn't a backdoor in ESP32 and B, let's let's chill out, man, with like the, the titles a little bit. Like undocumented features found in ESP32 firmware would have been way more accurate, but just as sensational and probably garner the same amount of clicks, but throwing the word backdoor in there just makes it weird. And I gotta be honest, man, I think I've even caught myself doing this with like the, 
The Chinese heart monitor, for example, it was later found by researchers, I think, at um, at Clarity that that feature that SZA found wasn't even real. So, like, I've even get been caught in this loop. So, I'm, you know, I'm not, I'm not victim or I'm not um, completely innocent in this. It, we just gotta, I think, slow down a little bit and like let's take things as they are. But yeah, I don't know. That's it. Kind of wanted to rant for a little bit. It just, I got all hyped up because I was like, oh, this will be super interesting. And then five minutes in, I'm like, ah, oh, fuck, man. It's a company trying to sell. Trying to sell like research services. I don't know. Anyway, we'll see you guys later. Take care. Goodbye.